Peace, peace. Lemon Andre. Peace, peace. With Noel at. Mr. Noel, where you at, man? Just sent you an invite. Let's get it. What's Gucci? Where you at, man? Yep, Noel, what's good, man? You were sent the invite. You should uh should have something. I'm inviting you on to the live. What's good? You you, you gotta check. You gotta check your uh your thing. You got an invite sent. You should be getting on in a second. Give me a second. First time doing this. Yo. Yo, Cool B was cracking, bro. Tell him what's going on, my brother. Hey, sh you know, just out here, just maintaining, relaxing. Yes. Saturday yes, night. Sir. ATL was cracking out there in LA, man. Chilling, man. It was uh, raining earlier, but um, now. It's getting kind of chilly. It stopped raining, but uh, everything is gravy, man. No complaints. Everything is on the up and up. No doubt, no doubt. So, yo, man, it's been a minute since we really been on that uh, on the Sim Radio page on on YouTube, and a lot of things that done transpired. Ah, man, within that time, that that little gap, and I figured we might as well just jump on a live real quick. You know, and, mm -hmm. and and just kind of touch base with, with with the people out there, man. Yo, what's good, yes, Lee? Green packs was popping, man. That's the home word. So yeah, man. Um, yeah, for for sure, for sure, man. Man, tell them folks to get up in here, man, because we're gonna we're gonna talk about some stuff, man. You know, a lot of things that's been on my mind. Yo, know, first and foremost, gotta send a R.I.P. shout out to the, the homie Nipsey. You know, that whole situation went down. Yeah. And it was it was it was never the same, man. Like it was never it wasn't the same after that whole situation went down. And um just wanna tell the, the homie, um, rest in power. Shout out to his family and everything like that. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah. Word. Yeah, my yeah, what up, yeah, yeah, yeah. What up, what up, what up? What up? <laughs> yeah, man. That's the homie, man. For real, for real. So, yo, man, so what's been going on since, you know, over the last month and month or so with you, man? Because, you know, people's out here, they're, they're like, damn, man, what happened to them dudes, man? We, 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 you know, what's, what's been going on on your ends? Dude, this, um, you know, staying focused is working, grinding, um, doing a lot of writing, just trying to, trying to put some projects together, some business projects, as you already know. Um and uh, other than that, that's that's been it, man. It just seems like this year just started, and it's, it seems like it's almost over, you know. So it's moving. So I'm just trying to take full advantage of these these days, and um, just trying to stay on top of stuff. Just trying to be more conscious and clear of these days, and just you know, try to get at least three major things done a day. No, that's peace. That's peace. Peace, Mama. What's what's going on, homie? Vel villains in the what house. Up, what man? up? For real, for real, man. We, yeah, we just on this live, man. We, we I want to talk about that. You know, everybody's talking about the the um Curry's wife, man. There's a lot of oh. people talking about that. You know Are what I'm saying? Sure Curry. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. You know, the whole situation. You know what I'm saying? A lot of people are talking about it. A lot of people have their opinions on it. Right. You know, she was on a, a show, the show with uh Jada Pinkett Smith. And um, uh, Facebook, yes, yes, man. <laughs> oh, that's how you feel in Lee Boy Green Stacks. You, you felt she she disrespected. We're gonna I, get I, into I, it, man. Respect, you know. Oh, man. Uh, okay, Come on, so if you don't look at her. This okay. My thing is this, man. She has a lot of insecurities, right? 
<laughs> and I see blue stacks. <laughs> <laughs> she has Go a lot ahead, of insecurities. Man. And right. I think with those insecurities, you know, and this is not all women, this is some, or, or maybe a lot. But the thing is that she has pretty much everything that a woman would want and would need. You know, she's successful. You know, she did, a lot of people don't know that she did some acting before she got with Curry. And, um, you know, so she did some acting. She's married to uh, one of the best NBA players in the league. She's rich. I think she has like a restaurant that she's working with or some pop-up shops or something like that. You know, right. and, um, you know, and she has this insecurity about men not sliding up in her DM. So would that say that she would be looking for this attention from other men? But you have a husband, you're married, your life is supposed to be complete. So why are you looking for other men for attention? Is that to validate who you are as a woman? Is that to validate your marriage? Because at the end of the day, it's like you're going to keep looking for something, but how by you going out looking for something, is that satisfying your need? And how does her husband feel about it? And how does her family members feel about it? Her family members and Curry's family members. Mm. All right, man. I, I always like to play the devil's advocate, man. Like, okay. I'm just Let's come with it. What you said. Like, for, for instance, Preach. Preach. Let, me just, let me just say this. Who says that she has everything that a woman would want. Every woman has a different version of what she might want in life. You know, people are really superficial with things like being married to an NBA player. Um, in a lot of people's mind is, is, is all the validation. A lot of people going to need, but mm -hmm. I think people tend to choose to concentrate on a conversation, like certain parts of a whole conversation, instead of looking over the whole conversation and putting things into context. You know, I think a lot of people right. missed out on points where she actually spoke and said, like, growing up, she had an issue um, identifying with her, you know, mixed background. You know, she said when she moved from Canada, she mm -hmm. moved to the United States, and she said she felt like she wasn't uh, white enough to hang around the white girls or black enough to hang around the black girls. So there was a lot of things that she actually said up, you know, uh, leading up to that statement that she made about uh, men not sliding in her DM. You know, oh. there's clearly um, identifying a, a problem that a lot of our women have. You know what I'm saying? I, 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 you know, kind of like an identity crisis that a lot of our women have. And you know, even though she's in the limelight, she's in the spotlight, her husband is Steph Curry, clearly mm -hmm. these issues were never addressed. You know what I'm saying? And just mm -hmm. having a superstar as a husband is not going to address that subconscious thing that's been going on for all those years before he was an NBA player. Those things, that to me, were deeply embedded in her. You know what I'm saying? And I think people just kind of brush over all those things that she said prior to, you know, I look at things okay. like not just the one line she said where people are not sliding, listen to the whole conversation. She, you know, she True. clearly, you know, she clearly has some, some things that a lot of women wouldn't admit that they had. I thought she was being very open to be honest with that, you. And, and that's fine that she's very open to the public but now, how do we know that this is not going to have a backlash on her husband? Because now, you gotta, that might be open season for dudes to slide up in her DM and try to get at her. And we don't know if she can say yay or nay or, or whatever the case may be or who's in her ear. Because, you know, you have so many of these um, women who are married to these athletes and some of these athletes go out and do their thing, but Who's to say some of these women are not going out and doing their thing as well, too, before their husband or their boyfriends are going out doing their thing, just to say, you know what, I bet he's doing something, but I'm going to do something just in case. Because these guys are always on the road, they're in different cities, 
And the thing is that I know people who work for um, the NBA, and they would tell me stories like, you know, these chicks will have their um, information for the hotel that they're staying in, so they'll be waiting for these dudes to get off the bus, waiting in the lobbies, waiting in the, um, the bars. You know, they'll be following these, these dudes from city to city. They'll have the, the, some of these women will have their whole basketball itinerary. And you can go online and get that on the NBA website um, to see where these guys are playing at. So at the end of the day, I mean, she has some, I'm not going to say she doesn't have some valid points, but you can't say that, um, you can't out there like that and um, you know and just say that um, you can't out there like that and just not expect to have some sort of backlash because yeah because anytime you share your opinion there's going to be a backlash like for instance right. the the girl says she takes um medication for anxiety right you know what I'm saying right. she struggles with anxiety she struggles with balancing the role of being a mother, being a wife, and being a mm -hmm. business owner and a, a, somewhat of a celebrity. So that's not easy for everybody. Everybody doesn't have that easy um, role of dealing with these things. You know, these are things that right. came at her. And, like, I'm going to give you an example. Like, I don't agree with this. There's a guy out there. I think his name is um, Nino something. I don't know if it's. You know, Brown is a heavy set guy. I like a lot of the things that he said, but he 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 called her weak. She's weak. You know, and I didn't agree with that because she gave birth to three children. She oh. ain't weak, bro. She ain't weak, she, bro. Don't let her out there. I don't think Big, she's she, weak. She was being honest. She she basically what this girl is saying, damn, I want to feel desired. She didn't she's not saying she wants um to act on men um sliding her DM. You mm -hmm. know what? Come on, come on, cool B. We've been around women our whole life, bro. You know women are very similar to children in some ways. A woman likes attention. Let's be right. honest. A woman likes a little attention. You know what I'm saying? So it's it's natural to me for a woman to want to feel desired on right. some level. You know, it might, I think it came out wrong, but I think she was still being honest. Like, you know, you could become a wife. You can marry somebody. Mm -hmm. You can marry somebody, right, and be with them for years and then stop feeling like you're sexy to your partner. So sometimes a woman going to seek validation in them DM sliding. You well, know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm well, telling you, I man. Get, I get it, but... See, but listen, but think about that. But listen, think about my that. thing is this. But she's telling us, and she's telling these women at the round table. But this wait, wait, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Me and Leroy, hold on, not to cut you off. Um, Green Stacks, she was asked a question on a show. Okay, That's she's true. asked a question on the show. It's not like she jumped on IG. And started talking this stuff like she was asked a specific question on a show. She was with um, her in-laws, and she was just being honest. I think she was being very right. vulnerable in the moment, and she is a well, public figure. So I, I'm just, I, you know, Leroy, you know, what I'm saying Green Stacks. Shout outs to you, man. I like I'm, I'm just giving my spill. But go ahead, Kobe. But the thing about it is, okay, on, she was on a show. She was asked a question. I get right. it. But my thing is that, do we know if this is something that was addressed with her husband? Do we know if this was something addressed with her in-laws? And what are her family's um, dynamics? Because we don't really know too much about her family, but we know about Curry's family. So my thing is that, and did she even get help to, to, to overcome these things that were part of her insecurities going up? We don't know these things because the thing is, she has the money to do it, and she has the money to have, and money's not everything, but she's in a position where she can do whatever she wants, when she wants. Everything is at her doorstep. So do we know if she is seeking or did she seek the proper help to overcome these um, insecurities? 
I, I don't think so. Because clearly she brought it out on this show and it clearly hasn't been checked. And and maybe this was just her calling out for help. You know what I'm saying? You know, we, we all like to think these, these celebrities are, are like, you know, happy-go-lucky 365 days of their life, but of, of the year, rather. You know what I'm saying? And, and we just feel like, you know, because your husband is this, or your husband is that, but you got to take into consideration she is a mother of three. Her husband's on the road right now. She's not really seeing her husband like that. So she got a lot of idle time. She got like, you know, um, you know what they say about idle time. You know what I'm saying? Idle time, you got time to start thinking about stuff and, you know, things that might, might not be the healthiest. You know, your husband's not there to console you. She's, he's on the road. He's in a, um, um, this time of the year, it's the NBA playoffs. You already know what's on the line. You know, she probably not even getting none. You know what I'm saying? Like, she might be backed up. Like, come on. Like, like let's be let's be honest. You know what I'm saying? These are things we got to seriously consider. This is a single mother. Like I said, she got three children that she got to take care of. You know, right. pretty much, you know, maybe she might have a little help from family, but she clearly still struggles with some of these things, man. Like, and it just hasn't been addressed. And to me, um, people might not like the platform that she chose to um, speak out on her on her shortcomings, or how she feels, but at least now it's out into the open. And I think Steph Curry is a, is a real enough dude to understand where his wife is coming from, because you know he's with her, um, clearly loves her, and she loves him because you know she's she's still with him. And like I said, I didn't think that was anything for her to act upon. You know, I just feel a little like, damn, like, I, you know, like, why must I stand around and have to be introduced? Like, I don't like the weight to be, and she also spoke on that too. Like, she don't like, everybody knows who her husband is, but like, he'll be out with her, and then some girl might walk up, and then she's like, feeling like, um, should I have to introduce myself? And I'm sure Steph got a lot of stuff going on. People come in at him all types of ways. So it's a struggle for him even. But yeah, I, think I, mean, just, I think she was just being honest. And I, I think a I lot think, of females feel like she feel, be honest with you. I think I think she was being honest. But at the same time, she you got to look at it like this. Her husband is the star. Her husband is the celebrity. No one really cares about, you know, his wife. No one wants to come and take pictures with her because she's not the athlete. And it's not not to be rude about it, but I mean, you know, you have like all of these women on. on you sound a little sexist. <laughs> not at all. Not at all. Because the thing is that no, no. Let's think about it. If if you look at the NBA, uh, sorry, the WNBA player Skylar Diggs, beautiful chick, and she's out with her husband, and people know Skylar. People are not gonna try to take pictures with her husband. They don't care about two shits about that dude. They be like, oh, that's Skylar. Die guys are like, oh, she's bad. Or you have young girls that look up to her that want to take a picture. They might speak right. to her husband and be like, excuse me, sir, can you take a picture with me and Skylar? And they might do that. But nobody's right. trying to come after her to take pictures with her. So it goes both ways, man. <laughs> it goes both ways. No one's looking for her. Um, Aisha Curry. And she seems like she's holding the step down and everything, which is a good thing. But at the same time, it's like, you know, sometimes you just got to play your position. You know, if you're if you're an act if you're trying to do your acting thing, and you were doing your acting thing before, get back and do your acting thing. Stay on course. You know, you have the money to have the help to get these things in order. And and I'm going back referencing money again because most people that have a lot of issues, what is the what is the major thing that they always bring up? Well, I don't got the money to do this. I don't got the money to do that. But at the same time, she has the money to get these things. But is she taking the steps to ensuring that um, these problems that she's having are going to be taken care of? Because we know about what the situation is right now, but are these situations going to continue in the future? Uh, true. I mean, like I said, I think she was finally able to put it out there into the universe. Hey, your green stacks, I see your question too. Um, you said his question is how will we feel um, empath 
uh, empathizing for Steph, um, how would we feel if the same action was done to us if we were in Steph's shoes? I mean, if I was in if I was in Steph's shoes, I, I mean that's my wife. Um, if I put myself in his shoes, I would have just been like, "Baby, you couldn't, you know, you couldn't address that to me. Like, you couldn't bring that to me in private." But I wouldn't trip on it. I wouldn't even trip on it. I, I'd just be like, "Baby, I, I wish you would have kind of told me about that." But who knows? How do we know that she didn't tell Steph? prior to that interview that she was going to come out with that. Because I don't you know, see Steph Curry tripping on it. Right. I don't because see Steph he, Curry tripping on it. All, all these other dudes are tripping on it. How you know that she didn't come to her husband and say, look, baby, I'm going to say something to keep, keep me hot in the media. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But, uh, yeah, something but uh, we, don't, yeah. we don't know that. We don't know that, but at the same but we time... Don't know that. We don't know a lot of stuff. Right. Yo, shout but out... The Shout out to 10, 10, 20, uh, 220. What up? What up? What up? What up, sis? So my thing is that we don't know what goes on behind closed doors. And I mean, it's not really a major issue like that. But the public, they're making it a major issue like, oh, now, you know, everyone wants to slide in her DM or whatever. But now, remember, be careful what you ask for. You know, if you, if you want attention with that. from men, then you're going to start getting attention from these men. So when they start sending um, slong pics and all of this other stuff, don't be like, <laughs> you know, um, this is not the type of attention I want. Yeah, but, you know, it's a, lot of perverts. <laughs> it's, 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 it's a lot of perverts out there. So my thing is that yeah. just be careful what you ask for. Is yeah, that's saying. true. I ain't even going I ain't gonna hold you. That that's definitely cause you know dudes, dudes go from zero to sixty real quick. You know what I'm saying? And, and she might not be able to handle, you know, she might get traumatized in one day. You know what yeah, I'm saying? And you're talking about um Aisha Curry, stuff Curry's wife and everything with that. But um, you know, it, it it is like in this day and age that we live in, man, I just think that you know, everybody has issues and everybody has things that they feel personally they have to overcome. But I think nowadays people are just kind of like uh, mentally soft because I know certain things I think um, that are going on now, people would have to be a little bit tougher, let's say in the 80s or the 90s when certain things were happening in the world that are that are not so much happening now. I, but I think that there are a bunch of things that are happening then that are happening now, but I just think people back in the days had to kind of be a little bit more tougher than they are now, you know, um, be a little bit more tougher, be a little bit more vocal back then. But um, I think, you know, with her, she's just a step away or a phone call away from getting help, whereas a lot of other people out here are not so lucky or not in a position to get the help that they need to get. Because even if you want to go out and see a doctor or see somebody who's a psychiatrist or, or somebody, you know, you got to pay money for that, man. It's not free. So right. she's in a position where she's going to be all right, man. And she has a good support system around her that's going to help her to manage all of those uh, DMs that she's going to be getting now. <laughs> in a, in a <laughs> be careful what you ask for, Aisha. Yeah. Be be careful what you ask for. A domino. Yes. Hold up, green stacks. The domino effect of her bad decision. Just your opinion. Yes, we know can cause a domino effect of unnecessary negative energy to attack the marriage. Have y'all seen the memes that came out over this shit? Man, niggas, yo, bro, niggas gonna be memeing everything, bro. Right. <laughs> everything is gonna get mean, bro. She she was getting mean before she ever made that statement. So the memes is the memes is for the you know, you know the niggas that have free times don't have jobs and shit. So we you right. know you can let them have the memes, but I mean there could be a domino effect. Um, green stacks, there could be definitely a domino effect. I'm not even going. I ain't gonna hold you. It might be a domino effect. But I feel their marriage is strong enough to withstand that anyways. Yo, what's, what's a marriage if it ain't battle-tested? 
Yeah. You know, well. and what's a battle that's not, I mean, what's a marriage that's not battle tested? Shoot, right. maybe this is going to make them stronger, make them bond a little harder. You know what I'm saying? So, I don't know. But, yo, I'm going to keep hopping on them or whatever. I, I also want to address this whole Vlad TV uh, interview with Lord Jamal where he was uh, trying to call out Dr. Sabi, calling him uh, a cult leader, uh, saying he, he's not really a doctor. I mean, what's, what's your take on that, man? Because I don't know, man. I felt some type of way with that with that interview, man. I, I started looking at Vlad a little sideways, you know, like, hmm. I don't know, man. What's your thoughts well, on that? I mean, I mean, here's the thing, man. Um, if anybody is studying something for X amount of years and they are going through a process of learning and reading and, and you know, just fully embracing something that they're learning, you can become an expert at that. Now, right. Just because you don't have a degree from a white university. And this is the same thing Lord Jamal said. Does it mean that you are not a person that can um, be self-taught and, and learn how to help people or cure people or, or do incredible things? Because some people are born with a gift that can, you know, go out here and, and, and help the world. But my thing is that you know, he has been doing, from what I heard and from what I read, amazing things. And I knew about Dr. Sabi like since like the the eighties, man, the eighty late eighties, early nineties. You know, and how I learned about him was I used to go to a lot of um, these um, street fairs and stuff like that, African street fairs, and and people would have different books from a lot of uh, black um, lecturers. Like Dr. Sebi, uh, what's her name? Shadazar Ali had some books out. And, um, you know, uh, just, just various different people. So I saw a book a person had on Dr. Sebi. So that's how I was kind of familiar with who he was. But as I got older and that name kept popping up and I started seeing people with videos and stuff like that, when the internet started becoming real popular, and I was like, oh, this guy's amazing, man. I started reading up on some stuff. And I'm like, he's doing a bunch of different things. But a lot about, excuse me, a lot of things about Dr. Sebi, there's still a lot of things people don't know. Like, right. you know, like he was suffering from a lot of um, different things. I think he had diabetes and he may have had cancer, things like that. But he went to somebody for help. And do you know who he went to for help? He went to no. a Mexican doctor in Mexico. I don't remember okay. the guy's name. I have it somewhere. But Dr. Sabi went to this guy because he was suffering from some stuff. And then the Mexican doctor healed Dr. Sabi. And then the thing about it was, you know, he just told him about his diet. He worked with him. And he cured him, quote, unquote, cure. We're going to use, we don't really want to use that word cure, but help to aid what he had to eradicate what he had or whatever. So then the thing is, Dr. Sabi took that knowledge and he was down in Florida. So he was right. in the United States helping people get over certain ailments and things like that. So he was right. in Miami. So he was down there and then what kind of um, what what kind of messed him up, he messed himself up because he put an ad out in the paper saying that people should come to him to get a cure. And that's when right. Dr. Sabi himself said, you know, they're going to come. His mother told him, they're going to come for you. They're going to come for you. They're right. going to come for you. So at the end of the day, now Dr. Sabi's no longer here. Nipsey Hussle was promoting Dr. Sabi. But even before Nipsey Hussle was Lisa Left Eye Lopez was promoting yes. Dr. Sabi. Thanks. Because the thing is that that was her spiritual advisor and things like that. And then right. the thing is, with her, you know, she was talking about him a lot too. And it, but it wasn't, but people knew about it, but it wasn't as big as what Nipsey Hussle's situation was when, when talking about Dr. Sabi. So my thing with that is, um, you know, if there, if there was a guy like Dr. Sabi going around 
and he's an intelligent being, or he was an intelligent being, and he was going around speaking on these things, and a lot of these things just made sense, you know, about the mucus in the body and all of these things, and he was listing different things that you can take to cure or to help aid what you have, right. you know. Um, so now at this stage of the game, the information is out there. So right. what are you, not saying you, Merz, but what are you, the people, are going to do? What are you going to do about having this information? Are you going to let it die? Are you going to utilize this information and hold it as your own and then start passing it down to different people? I or think that's you had the information. And, but even if you had the information and you knew um, personally what he was doing and you had a list of these things, are you going to utilize these things furthermore? I think I think it's going to happen. I think we are just in that age where things just don't die. Like you do something five years ago, it doesn't die. It comes right back. So I, right. I really think that uh, his knowledge will actually – it'll actually be spread out, cross-pollinated. And I think more people right. are going appreciate, to appreciate him as time goes forward. Now, just to kind of go back to that Vlad interview with Lord Jamar, um, I feel like Vlad was kind of low-key trolling. I, it, it just felt like he was kind of trolled, just trying to invoke a, a reaction out of Lord Jamar. You know, some of the things he said didn't even really add up. Oh, he didn't, you know, he he wasn't a, a, a official doctor. And, and, and to me, it's like that word to me is not necessary. He was a healer, you know. I mean, how many doctors does um, DJ Vlad know that actually heal people of anything? I mean, I wish Jamal would have asked that. Like, right. how many doctors do you know with a certificate? That has actually helped people, like that. Right. That's what I would have asked them. You know, can can you show me your your doctors and their cases? Can you you know can you validate them? Because he was trying to write uh, Sabi off as this pseudo type of healer or doctor, pseudo doctor, I guess you could say, right. because he didn't go through the school of thought of taking um, um, classes to say you know how to give people drugs. Right. In particular, pharmaceutical drugs. So really, a doctor ain't nothing but somebody that just knows how to push some pills. Right. And I like to add that most doctors are not trained in nutrition. That's why you have a position called nutritionist. Right. Because most doctors are not trained in nutrition. And if you know, like I know, which I know you know already, nutrition right. is definitely a part of, you know, on keeping the body in a very uh, alkaline state or acidic state. You know, right. depending on the way you eat, the foods that you put into your system is what's going, what you're going to get out of it. You know, so if you eat something that is, uh, that was killed in a certain manner, mm -hmm. that had to fare for its life, that energy that actually left. And it actually leaves an impression in the flesh that you eat. So, you know, you know, people eating this food looking stressed out. Got wrinkles on their face looking crazy. Looking like because zombies. <laughs> eating it has a certain energy to it. And this whole universe is based on energy. So if you're sitting up there eating that type of food, what do you think you're getting? What's the output? Because whatever you put in got to come out. You know? Mm -hmm. I felt like Vlad was just kind of trolling Jamal, uh, Lord Jamal, and he wasn't validating anything himself, you know, and he's a cult leader. How is he a cult leader? Right. You've never even heard um, Dr. Sabi in any situation that was cult-like. I mean, where's he coming with this? Right. Who's funding Vlad? <laughs> like, I'm, I'm starting to wonder. Who, who's, who's funding Vlad? Because that gas was getting on him like a few years ago, and nobody really wanted to listen to Dane. And it's just funny to me, man, because it's like I notice whenever Dane Dash call out somebody, nobody wants to listen. 
He called out Harvey Weinstein. I mean, Weinstein. I said, Steel. Mm -hmm. Harvey Weinstein, he called him out. Nobody mm -hmm. wanted to listen to him. Right. When, when, when Dame Dash said, um, Lee Daniels owed him like at least $2 million, nobody wanted to listen to Dame. And then what happened? They catch that video of him approaching Lee Daniels and, and pressing him. Pressed him. Pressed him. And you can clearly see that Lee Daniels is guilty as hell. Guilty as charged. That dude so, had a blue cloak or, or like a cover. He's like, Dame, Dame, it's okay. Very calm. Dame was yelling at that dude. And the thing is that, right. you know, you can't do things like that and help people along the way. And when they get to a position and you feel like you're high and mighty, you owe the man, you owe the man. Pay the man his money, man. Pay the man his bread. Facts and Doctor Sabi did a lot of things for a lot of people. So get that man his props. You know, you can sit up there and play skeptic all you want, bro. You know, this man is not is not is not out there for no reason. Like his his name is doesn't ring bells. His I mean, sorry, his name rings bells for a reason. Get that man his props, man. Give that man his respect. And I think Vlad is just not putting respect on certain things. And even with the Easy E situation, like. Him talking about Easy E having A's, and a lot of people close to Easy E have been kind of getting at him. His daughter had to get at him, you know, saying like, "No, that's not the situation." You know, you're you're saying you're 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 telling uh, a story that's just not valid, right? You know, you know, he kind of ruffled some fe feathers with that, you know. Um, so yeah, I just think he was kind of stirring the pot, and I think Lord Jamar is just, you know. Lord Jamal is Lord Jamal, man. You're not going to play Lord Jamal like that. You know, he he's not going to go for it. You know what I mean? So, pretty much. Yeah, this Vlad trolling and, you know, Vlad got such a big platform now that I think he's just starting to smell himself a little bit, you know. He needs to come back down to earth, you know, because it's like you're yeah. trying to come out by, by heroes. Facts. That's that's what I feel like. You trying to come after one of our heroes, bro. Like certain people should be just be sacred, bro. You know, leave that shit alone, man. You 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 are a guest in this community here, bro. No disrespect, but you are a guest in this community, and we embraced you. But at the same time, you know, you gonna you gonna have to respect certain people. You are gonna have to respect certain um, certain groups. You know, and that's just what just what it is, man. You got when you do cross them lines, you will get checked. That's that's it. Yeah. Oh yeah. Shout out to Vlad, but you know, like I said, I just didn't really, just didn't really like that interview, man. Just didn't like the way that 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 kind of came came about, and just felt like he was just trying to get a reaction out of our Lord Jamar and just kind of kind of have a new headline <laughs> for his. Uh, you know, interview part, you know, because you know he breaks his joint up in the little parts, but yeah, man. Just felt like speaking on it, man. Like I said, I'm sure Aisha Curry is going to be fine, you know, when the playoffs is over. <laughs> and Steph probably has his what? His what? His fourth ring, you know. You know, all be forgiven. <laughs> we, ain't gonna be, we ain't even going to be talking about this because you know what? You know, Nipsey Hussle, um, you know, his passing was, was something crazy. And it's like, to me, it's like, once the NBA finals came on, like, ain't nobody talking about no Nipsey Hussle. Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, it's just crazy to me how when I look at people on Facebook, I look at what they do, I look at what they're, they're studying, it's like a program. I swear to goodness, it's like a scheduled program. Right. You know what everybody gonna be posting about. You know, I, I was gonna ask a question: Is that Gucci um, strike still going? I don't know. That's a good question because I still see a lot of people in Gucci, so I don't think it's over. So now, nah, so Gucci, we we good. I'm not gonna have Ti approaching me. <laughs> but the thing, the thing about it is, um, you know, a lot of people have short term memories, and the thing is. You know, a lot of things are happening at a rapid pace. So we, we get bombarded with a lot of information. But the thing about it is um, you can't forget 
and you can't let certain things go unchecked. You know, people are still wearing Gucci, but I'm like, yo, they were doing some racist stuff or saying some racist things, but people still wear Gucci. Just like H&M, right. they were saying some racist stuff, not once, but twice. And um, the thing about it is people still go to H&M. And what even, about um, Wells, Wells Fargo? Wells Fargo, too. And even, um, what is it, uh, Burberry, when they had the, the noose on some of the models' necks walking down the runway, I'm like, I'm like, is this blatant disrespect? So, and some people don't really care. They'll still wear the Gucci. So if the owner of Gucci came in and started spitting in people's faces, especially like black people's faces, two, two, two. The cats would be like, oh, I'll still wear my Gucci. The cats that are still with a Gucci, man. I'm just like, so I don't understand like, um, you know, people's mindset because at the end of the day, you weren't born wearing Gucci. You know, it's a clothing line. It's a clothing company. But some people in their minds feel that they need this stuff. I need to have this Gucci. I they feel need valid. To have... Yeah, it's it's like a validation to them. But mostly nine times out of ten, these people that are wearing all of these expensive clothes, they don't own their own homes. You know, they don't own any land. They don't own any businesses. So my thing is that why would you then? spend hundreds and thousands of dollars wearing these clothes when your priorities are all screwed up. It doesn't make any kind of sense, man. But some people just don't care. They're in it for the now. Oh, I need this now. I don't care. I need it now. Even like my boy who was uh, selling cars temporarily, you know, he was selling some cars and it wasn't really his thing that he wanted to do. He wanted to try something new. And he, I remember he told me there was a guy, he came into the um, dealership and he wanted, a, um, a, I think it was a Dodge Charger. And he said, yo, I want the car. I, I want the car. And my boy was looking at his credit and looking at everything and looking at how much he gets paid. And my boy is just kind of breaking it down. And I'm like, oh, dude, I mean, I'm trying to save you something here because I save you from yourself because the thing is that you want this car, but your pay stubs don't actually line up with what the car costs for one what the insurance is going to cost and you got to take into consideration your other bills and stuff i don't care the guy was like i want the car i'm not leaving here until i get the car my boys are like, all right so you have certain people you got to look at them and be like yo who raised you man because if you are going to go through life acting that way thinking that way you're never going to be in a position where you are going to win. You're always going to be digging yourself out of a hole, man. And that's just the mentality of people. Some people just don't care. They want to be consumers. Even if the company is disrespecting you, you're still going to go there and smile and grin your teeth. Well, I don't care. It, it, they wasn't talking about me. I'm black, but I, I'm a different type of black person. They ain't talking about me. And I'm just like, oh, dude, they're talking about black people in general. And it's so different this time that we live in now. You know, people are so um, so lost, so delusional. And you try to tell somebody something, you know, like, look, they don't want you to drink this. They don't want you to wear this. These are people that really don't want you wearing or drinking or, or eating in their establishment. But you still go over there and eat their food and drink their wines or their liquor, and they don't want you because the thing is that they, some of these companies look at black people as if they're going to bring the quality of their brand down, but yet some people will break their necks, kill the next person to come and wear their shit, period. So, and, and I remember we had this conversation before about, um, you know, a lot of these companies, they don't really advertise to black people because they don't put them in black magazines, these these Facts. companies in black magazines. Never seen a Gucci they, in a sauce or double XL. Never seen it. Mm -mm. Never seen it in any, any hip hop magazine. But hip hop people will break their necks to go get this stuff. And you know, it just it just baffles me how um you know you can sit down and even 
I saw T.I. schooling some dude who had on the Gucci. And the guy was like, well, you were wearing it. Well, you were wearing it. But I'm like, yo, dude, even if T.I. was past tense, was wearing it, they kind of crap on black people. And T.I. said, yo, I'm done with them. That's it. But then the guy had all this fresh stuff. And I'm like, yo, dude. And he was trying to school T.I., but T.I. was like, yo, dude, I wore it up until the point that they were saying this stuff, but I'm not wearing it any longer. And the guy was this, well, you I, 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 I'm, a, I'm not really with the T.I. shit. I, I'm not even going to lie to you. I, I, right. I, I got to disagree. But yeah, T.I. was, yeah, you was, you know, this Gucci radical at that point. But the, to be right. honest with you, I wasn't feeling him with the Mayweather diss. I wasn't feeling none of that. I feel like T.I., um, though he might have felt some type of way about the Gucci thing, throughout right. the whole thing, did, did you see T.I. big up any black brands? Um, Here's the thing. I, I wasn't I, feeling it. Is you well, harping he, on Gucci or is you promoting black brands? That's that's all I want to know. Because if you right. would have been more powerful... Had T.I. said, yo, forget Gucci. Yo, check out brands such as... Do you know how many brands would have blew up? Right, you right. that? Did a roll call? Did a roll call on all these different brands? Overnight, a lot of the brands would have would have had uh, some great sales. Crash day sites. This T.I. This how, many, how many followers T.I. got? You know what I'm saying? Think about that. If T.I. And did, went on Twitter and found like 20, the top 20 black brands and did a Twitter throughout the day, naming the top 20 um, black brands that you could buy clothes from, that would have been a lot more powerful than T.I. walking up with some random kid and tell him, telling him, why you rocking Gucci? I just felt like he could have used his power a little better. And I messed with T.I. T.I.'s my dude. But I just felt it was right. a way he could have went about that. And I definitely wasn't right. feeling that Mayweather thing. You know what I'm saying? Well, he, I just like I wasn't feeling that either. And that yeah. was just personal because, you know, of his situation with his wife or whatever. We're not going to get into that. But the thing is that I don't even think that T.I. even knew that he was being recorded when he was schooling the young dude on the joint. Right. So that's what caught him. But he could have came out outside of school in that dude once that video surfaced of him right. supporting a black brand or supporting other black brands. Like, look at another black brand like Carl Kanai. Carl Kanai's been out for years and years and years, and he's still doing his thing to this day. Right. You know, and he's a black brand out of many, but I still see some people wearing it, but some people are like, oh, well, this is played out. Whatever, but the yeah, thing is that, whatever they said that yo, dude, they said that by road chains maybe 10, 10 15 years ago. They all rocking road right. chains again, but you know, but yo, man, I'm getting ready to kick. I just kind of want to chop it up with you where you was at, you know, what your thoughts was on that, and and you know, yo, shout outs to anybody who, who you know tapped in or whatever. You feel me? And um, Sir. yeah, we definitely gonna get on this live thing. It's our first live, so you know a little rusty and everything like that, trying to figure out the technology. But uh, we definitely going to be back on here, man. Shout out to my man Greenstacks, my man Leroy Greenstacks, man. Yo, I see you, homie. We definitely going to have to get up in NC, man. We we long overdue, man. Seriously, got to lock in with that brother. But, yo, good looking, man. And uh, we definitely going to chop it up again, man. Cool B on the West Coast signing off. Mr. Mercy, I'm over here in the ATL. Yo, big ups to everybody worldwide, man. Peace. Peace.